Welcome to the big hit, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Chris Hayes. I'm filling in for Sarah Moles, the usual host. I'm the host today. We're gonna start off with spring training on today's show. I'll be with Sean Fritz, Dennis Canes, and Jared Brown talking about all things spring training leading up to the baseball season. After that, it's NBA All-Star Weekend, talking everything about the, from the dunk contest, the three-point contest, the skills competition. I'll be joined by Jose Villeneuve and Kevin Bohan. Then we got the Valentine's Day segment. It is Valentine's Day after all. This is the Valentine's Day episode. We're talking about Valentine's Day on this segment, no doubt about it. Sarah Moltz and Jarrett Johnson. And then finally, you're not gonna wanna miss this. Wait till the end, you gotta wait till the end for this. It's the big hit dating show, the first one ever. We got three NFL players talking to a bachelorette about who they wanna go on a date with. So it's, it's can't miss stuff here on the big hit today. Wall to wall, packed with action. We'll be right back here on the big hit. Stay tuned. I'm IUP basketball player Brandon Northfleet. And this is the big hit. Today we have a bit of different a bit of a different episode for you guys. I can promise you you won't want to touch that remote. Don't do it, Rockers. Don't do it! Max, you don't even belong on set la, yet. La, la. Get out of here. Sorry, I, I got a little singing every day, la la la. Jake, not you two. Be quiet over there. Guys, guys, get it together. Anyway, Rockers, just keep watching. Welcome back into the Big Kid, everybody. My name is Chris Hayes. I'll be your host for this segment. We're talking Major League Baseball here, specifically Major League Baseball spring training. I'm here with my friends Sean Fritz, Dennis Canis, and Jared Brown. Let's get right to it, guys. Uh, baseball right around the corner, as we all know. Uh, pitchers and catchers reported for a lot of teams today. Um, after an offseason filled with tragedy, unfortunately, with the losses of star pitchers, Jose Fernandez for the Marlins, Jordano Ventura for the Royals, um, very sad. Um, filled with tragedy in the offseason, but we're back to baseball now. What is a personal spring training storyline that you are following? We'll start with Sean. For me, it's honestly, especially in the National League, is anybody better than the Chicago Cubs? I think that's something that we're going to see throughout the entirety of the season. Um, for me, obviously, the Cubs have to be one of the favorites, if not the only favorite, uh, to go to the World Series again in October. Um, we all know about the terrific you know, comeback they had in the World Series this past year, uh, coming back from a 3-1 deficit and winning in Game 7 uh, in Cleveland. Uh, that was obviously a big win, first World Series in 108 years or whatever it's been for Chicago. You look, take a look at their roster, clearly they've got all kinds of talent. They've got a boatload of it, and they've got a lot of depth. Uh, the question is, is anybody able to knock off the Cubs in October? Uh, two years ago, we saw the Mets knock off uh, a pretty good, well-rounded Cubs team. Uh, not the team they are now, obviously, but a pretty good Cubs team. A lot of the same pieces were there at the time. Can we see another team get hot like that at you know, any point throughout the season, let alone in October, that's going to be the biggest storyline for me because I think you look at it on paper, Chicago by far, hands down, is the best team in baseball. And they, they missed Kyle Schwarber last year exactly. too for the whole and year. So with him back, we'll see how they can even get even better. And, and another thing about the Cubs too is, you know, they've got a lot of these big pieces, whether it be Rizzo or Bryant, Jason Hayward they, re, they acquired last season, Schwarber. They've got a lot of really good pieces. Can they – create this dynasty before free agency sets in, that's going to be another one too to watch out for, not only just this year, but in the coming years before one of these guys becomes a free agent and might you know, be swayed somewhere else. Yeah, um, I would have to go with the Washington Nationals, uh, a team that's been for the past three years, maybe has talked about uh, a World Series favorite, but they haven't even been able to make it out of the first round of the playoffs. Um, I know this year they weren't able – so far, they haven't been able to acquire a closer. They let go of Papelbon. So I feel like they're in a big hole right there. And they haven't signed anyone to go with Bryce Harper. And I really feel like going into this season and how the season ends, that this should be the season where it's either we continue to try to build on what we have or we start getting more pieces and trading away other people and rebuilding. I think about Bryce Harper, too. He has like a year or two left on yeah. his contract. Yeah. This is pretty much their year. I mean, he's yeah. a free agent in 2018. I mean, I'm hearing rumors of possible $400 million contract yeah. for Bryce Harper. A lot of speculation him going to the Yankees, right? Yeah. Well, I, would, I could see him going to the Yankees, definitely. Uh, well, I'm happy you brought up the Nationals because what I'm excited about this whole postseason is Bryce Harper. Right? Yeah. 
like you just said, Chris, he, he might be the first billionaire athlete just off contracts. But also, I'm excited to see he kind of has to do some rebuilding. I mean, he dro his batting average dropped from 330 in 2015 to 243 in 2016. So that's almost a, dropping a full point in batting average. Uh, I don't think it was ever official. I don't think he ever had injury problems. He was never placed on a DL last year. But he, I don't know what his problem was. And I'm kind of excited to see, was there an underlying issue? Did he just slump? And also, like you said, Sean, uh, the Cubs, they are the best team in the league. But you have potentially, with the Nationals, two Cy Young pit finalists and two MVP finalists. So with a staff like that, if Bryce Harper could turn it around and start hitting the ball like Daniel Murphy, those are your two MVP finalists. I think Washington, if they can get a complete healthy season from all their major pieces, including Bryce Harper, they could, they could be the only team better than the Cubs in, in the same league. I wish they were American League so we could see a great showdown in the World Series. But... I think Bryce Harper, he's going to be a big deal this offseason. I'm really excited to see what he does. And, and that's the thing with Bryce Harper, too. I'm glad that you know we mentioned him. Harper, obviously, his numbers and average went down last year. The power numbers were still there for him. You know, he still produced at the plate. And Daniel Murphy picked up a lot of the slack for Bryce Harper last year, especially with the batting average. He had an MVP type year. Right, yeah, and he had power numbers of his own, too. So it'll be interesting to see if you know Murphy isn't what he was last year. And obviously, that's going to be a very tough thing to do. Because nobody, you know, hits like that every single season, unless you're, you know, someone like Ted Williams, someone who's a Hall of Famer, one of the greatest hitters ever. I don't know. I don't think Daniel Murphy is one of the greatest hitters ever. But you know, for such a hot year that he had last year, it'll be interesting to see can Harper pick it up if Murphy does slack. Yeah. I think it's another storyline to watch with Washington. Yeah. We talked about Bryce Harper. We're going to mention three other guys: Mike Trout, a guy who could possibly be one of the best players of all time when it's all said and done. Harper, Trout, Chris Bryant, Carlos Correa, all these guys have one thing in common. They're all number one prospects at one point. Um, going into the season, the 2017 season, um, the MLB released their annual top 100 prospects for 2017, as we all know. Gives, gave fans a chance of who they believe will make an impact from day one of the season. Who is a player we might know today to look out for, a prospect? Maybe, maybe he saw Major League action last year. Maybe he didn't see any Major League action yet. Dennis, I'm going to start with you. Who's a guy that you're looking out for, a hot young prospect? Uh, I'm going to have to go with uh, J.P. Crawford, a uh, short, uh, shortstop for the Phillies. Um, he's, been, he's been in the minors since 2013. He had a slow start, but ever since that he has, ever since he's been drafted, he's been on the t top 100 prospects, and the past two seasons, he's been in the top 10. Uh, he's just been hitting great. He's been hitting uh, 276 for the past two years consecutively. I just feel like once he comes up, he's really going to impact uh, a big, a good uh, leadoff hitter for the Phillies. Uh, my, my minor league prospect, who I am extremely excited about, is Austin Meadows. Uh, he's in over 100 games at the Indianapolis Ind Indians, uh, an affiliate for the Pirates. He's produced over a batting average of over 300, and he's currently ranked sixth on uh, the MLB's top 101 prospects. Um, the only th he should be in the ma majors already. The only thing stopping him is that the Pirates – have arguably the best outfield in the in the uh, MLB, so there's no room to bring him up. But uh, there's also Andrew McCutcheon, who's kind of on the trade block. He's still in Pittsburgh, and I'm pretty confident he's in Pittsburgh to start out the season. But as the season develops, you might see McCutcheon, maybe Marte or Polanco, get sent off somewhere, and uh, Austin Meadows can bring in, could fill that spot for them because uh, we all know that Pittsburgh, of all people, needs pitching. So I do think that the Pirates are going to have to lose one of their stud outfielders to kind of rebuild their pitching staff, but Austin Meadows would be a great fit in Pittsburgh. There's a lot of talk about if McCutcheon plays well this season and the, if the Pirates don't perform well, they'll trade him for like a, as his peak value and bring up Meadows, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Sean, who you uh, Yeah, for me, I'm going to say uh, Dansby Swanson, shortstop for the Atlanta Braves. The Atlanta Braves franchise right now is in kind of a delicate stage. They Nobody really knows what they're doing. They're kind of acquiring. The past couple of seasons, they've just been kind of acquiring veteran players just to kind of fill spots. But with them opening a new stadium, this kid, I think, could be the face of, a fran of the franchise. He had 302 last year in 38 games. He was a first overall selection by the Arizona Diamondbacks, Diamondbacks in the 2015 draft. It was a big, crucial part of the Shelby Miller deal in which uh, Atlanta shipped off Shelby Miller to Arizona. Uh, this kid has got a lot of tools, and I think, like I said, I think he could be the face of a franchise for someone who's really been struggling. And you know, I don't think that this Braves team is going to contend whatsoever this year. Uh, I think they are a rebuild process away from finally getting back to where 
Um, they've been in years past, but I think this kid is the starting point that they need in Atlanta, and he's obviously a really good piece for them to kind of replace the production of Andre Alton Simmons, at least defensively speaking. Offensively, like I said, he hit 302. He can hold his own there too. So if you're an Atlanta Braves fan, a lot to look forward to with this kid playing shortstop. Now it's about putting pieces around him. They just added uh, Brandon Phillips via trade, uh, sent two prospects to Cincinnati for the veteran second baseman. So that'll be a good stall worth up the middle, in the middle part of the infield for the Atlanta Braves with Swanson and uh, Phillips playing there. And for a few years now, the NL East, all it's been is the Mets, the Nationals battling it out, really. The right. Marlins were in there last season. Uh, this year, it could be the same way, but the Phillies are coming back. You yep. guys uh, Phillies and the Marlins. About that. Marlins will be in there, and then the Braves in a couple of years probably will be right back in the mix, too, because they were in the mix for like 20 years Yep, for a while, a couple of years ago. Anyway, off-season acquisitions we're talking about now. There weren't too many of them uh, the, over the off-season, not too many big names moved uh, teams but if there's one you could you could uh, predict or not predict you could uh, talk about from the offseason brownie who was a big one for you um i'm actually really excited about uh chicago shipping off travis wood to uh, kansas city for two reasons one uh travis wood's an interesting player in himself he's a uh, set up man in the bullpen that is very likely good enough to be a closer in almost every other city except chicago who had who went and picked up uh our oldest chapman but uh so I'm also interested to see how Travis Wood is going to do as a uh, closer in Kansas City. And also, Kansas City's an interesting team themselves this year. They're kind of falling off the wagon. They're yep. dwindling. They're not really a World Series contender anymore. So I'm excited to see if any acquisitions and any move, if Kansas City still has it. Because they're what I think I read they're the second or third oldest team in the MLB. So they're, uh, there's a lot of uh, exciting, interesting things happening in Kansas City. So... I want to see if Travis Wood could get it done as a closer, if he's just a career setup man. Sean? Yeah, um, for me, I, I really like the acquisition of Chris Sale by the Boston Red Sox. I think that's going to be a really fun pitching rotation to watch. Um, obviously, Rick Porcello, Cy Young winner uh, last year uh, in the American League. He's coming back. David Price, everybody knows about the big deal he got You know, last, off, last offseason. Uh, now they throw Sale into the mix, who was a finalist for the Cy Young Award last year. Uh, Sale obviously had some issues in Chicago uh, with the White Sox uh, and management. They didn't really get along that well. And obviously it doesn't help that when you're not contending uh, for a division or for a playoff spot in Chicago, it wasn't. I think putting him in to this Boston clubhouse will be a good move, uh, not only for the Red Sox and his production. Obviously the man's a stud. He's a complete ace. Uh, with him and Price and Porcello, um, I think that the Red Sox have a really good makeup. Obviously, they were in the postseason last year and just ran into that hot Cleveland team, but the Red Sox have definitely got to be a contender this season, especially with that depth they have with those top three guys in their rotation. I think Boston's a team that could contend for a title even without Chris Sale. Right. You're yep. bringing a guy like Chris Sale, a guy who I don't think he's won a Cy Young, but he's been in the conversation right. a lot of he's years. He's an all-star pretty much every year. I mean, the one, two, three of Sale, Price, Porcello, I mean, that's, yeah. that's tough to beat. Dennis, what do you think? Um, I'm actually going to go with uh, Roldis Chapman. Going from winning the World Series with Chicago Cubs and then going to the, the Yankees. Uh, back just, to the Yankees. Back to the Yankees. But just like you said how um, Boston just got better, I feel like uh, the Yankees obviously getting him just got better. But not only that, that whole division is good. The Blue Jays are good, and the Orioles are even like a yeah. decently yeah. good playoff team. So um, I really think just him going back – after winning a World Series, gave him confidence, and I really think he's going to help the Yankees close out big games, and they're going to make a nice – it's going to be a good season for them. they got a lot of good pieces coming up as well, yeah. so they're yeah. going to be another team to throw into that mix where I don't know if this particularly is their year, but definitely a year yeah, for yeah. them to really develop some of this talent that they've got in their farm system. Uh, I think they're going to be a really fun team to watch, and I think they're, they're going to compete as well. Yeah, they've got guys like Clint Frazier coming up for the Yankees. What that yeah. catcher, too? What's their catcher's name? I don't, don't recall his thin's name yeah. immediately. I don't remember. He had a great thing. year last yeah, year, though. Yeah, he did have a great year. Uh, we'll see what the Yankees do this year. The only team in that division that's really not too good is the Rays. The Rays, yeah. Yeah, but they'll be on the up and up probably in a couple of years soon, soon also. Last question. We've talked about this before the segment started. It's a very hot-button issue. Uh, baseball's been in the news lately, not just for spring training, but also they're planning to experiment with a rule change in the minors this season. They're going to start on the minor league, see if it is successful, if people like it. And it could go to the major leagues, but we're not sure about that yet. But the rule is each team will be able to start with a runner at second base while in extra innings to try and speed up the end of the game. Uh, I think I know the answer to this, but do you guys like this rule or not, Sean? Go ahead. Absolutely not. 
absolutely not. I we like we talked about it before we came on air. Um, I understand why Major League Baseball wants to try to speed up the game and they want to keep people involved because you talk to most people nowadays who aren't you know real baseball baseball guys as we would call them. Um, they the one thing they hate about baseball is that oh well, I can't sit down and watch a game it takes too long. But that's the beauty of baseball. Baseball is timeless. It's the only game that's played where there is no clock. It's always been like that. Exactly. Too. And that's how it's been. It is the purest form of sport because of that. Um, and I think trying to speed it up, I have no problem trying to speed it up during um, commercial breaks. You know, Now that they have this uh, the two-minute clock or whatever it is between commercial breaks where the guy's got to get on the field and get loosened up, I'm fine with that. But as far as gameplay goes, absolutely not. I think... First of all, it's an advantage for both teams that really kind of counteracts each other because if you think about it, both teams have a man on second with no outs. Major League Baseball team should be able to bring that guy in, obviously. And what's the difference between he starts at second or he starts at, at first? It's just increasing more defense, which I like, obviously, defense and pitching to be able to hold that guy. But at the same time, I don't think that there's any room for baseball to be um, – played with in that manner uh like we like i just said it's timeless and that's the beauty of it yeah i honestly i have to agree absolutely not i didn't like when they did the clock like you said i didn't like when they added in the review baseball is it is a game i feel like that should not be touched and if it's not broken there's nothing to be that needs to be fixed it's a perfectly fine game and if you don't like how long it is then watch another sport the whole thing I don't understand about the I, – I, I think the rate of play, fix, fixing those rules, it was a good idea that was executed horribly by the MLB. But this man on second and extra innings, why wouldn't you find a way to speed up the game during the boring beginning innings? And then that, why, why are you trying to speed it up at the most exciting part of the game? Right. That, that First mm -hmm. off, that makes no sense to me. Second off, like you said, Sean, you're a single away or two pop flies away from winning a game. That, right. If, are you going to do that in the playoffs? Absolutely not. Yeah. People would riot. So, but that being said, I think this rule could be great for the minor leagues. I do think that. See, I, I yeah. would disagree with that because you know, at the, it's not just about Major League Baseball for me. It's about the game itself. And the beauty of baseball, like I said, is, is that it's timeless. There is no clock. I don't think this rule is attacking like, the integrity of the sport, the, I don't the, think the values right. of the sport. It's not making the sport any... Well, it's giving it a pretty lackluster ending, but it's not making the sport any less fun for, let's say, kids watching, trying to get inspired. My old thing is, it's minor league baseball. You're, the whole purpose of that is to develop players for the big show. You're not really raking in television deals. Your stadium sales don't really mean right, anything to those You do have people but, buying tickets to go and see a game. They expect to watch baseball. And that's, not, that's kind of a that's differentiated a version of baseball. It is, but... Still, I mean, if you're speeding, up, you're if you're speeding up minor you're league games, it's not the end of the world. If the MLB wants to experiment with this in the minor leagues, realize they're terribly wrong. I'm perfectly all right with that. Yeah. They bring it up to the major leagues. I mean, I'm starting a petition. Right. It's, it's a terrible rule, and the MLB is insane for even thinking this is okay. Yeah, and in my opinion, I think the whole objective is, of this is to get more people watching. Obviously, that's how the MLB makes their money get people watching, whether at the game or on TV, at home. I think the best way for them to do it is kind of how what we're going to start seeing, I think, personally, in the next couple of seasons. You've got guys coming up who are potential superstars. I mean, we named a few earlier. Bryce Harper, Mike Trout, Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo. The, the list goes on. There are a lot of young guys who are going to be coming up within the next couple of seasons who are complete studs and who people want to watch. And we just talked about the offensive guys. You can talk about some of the – the veteran pitchers, some of the young pitchers that are coming up, whether it be Kershaw, Bumgarner, um, Chris Sale, whoever you want to pull out there, they, that's the way you got to do it. you got to start developing more superstars within the game. I think that's what's going to attract people's attention more. I agree. I think baseball's issue has been a lack of stars. Right. You look, look at the NBA, I mean, there's a ton of stars. Exactly. Baseball, you think you think Mike yeah. Trout, you think Kershaw. Team. Maybe yeah, you talk Chris about Bryant. pretty much every league except for baseball. All the four major professional North American sports, whether it be football, basketball, hockey, there's a handful, if not more, superstars throughout the league. Baseball, you really just have right now who people would know would be Bryce Harper and Mike Trout, and really only baseball fans know. 
If you walk down the street and said to somebody, do you know who Tom Brady is? They'd say yes. Do you know who LeBron James is? They'd say yes. Sure. Do you know who Mike Trout or Bryce Harper is? They'd be like, oh, maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. you got to develop more superstars and get more national attention to it. I think I, things like Sunday Night Baseball, Wednesday Night Baseball, I think those are huge. Get more national coverage of baseball. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. That's all the time we have here. Uh, Sean Fritz, Dennis Canas, Jared Brown. I'm Chris Sace. Thank you so much for watching this MLB spring training segment. We'll be right back on the big hit. Here at The Big Hit, we like to be prepared, because sometimes technology doesn't always work, so we do what we can. Hey Sean, hit him up. This just in, Tim Tebow just got inducted to the Hall of Fame. That's not right. Maybe we need to prepare just a little more. What is Generation Gap? 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 Bridging the gap on controversial topics between generations. Between generations. And you're watching Generation Gap. Generation Gap. And you're tuned into another exciting week of Generation Gap. I'm Jose. I'm David Loomis. I'm I am Vicky Ortiz. So my name is Brandon Reger. My name is Dylan Reinhardt. What is Generation Gap? Bridging the gap on controversial topics between generations. Bridging the gap on controversial topics between generations. And welcome back into the big hit once again. I'm your host, Chris Hayes. I'm here with Jose Villeneuve and Kevin Bohan. We're talking about NBA All-Star Weekend coming up this weekend. One of my favorite weekends in sports. I love the NBA All-Star Game and everything that goes with it. Let's get right to it, guys. The NBA Skills Challenge is the first thing they usually do. That'll pit the craftiest big men versus the swiftest point guards. Last year, Carl Anthony Towns, the young Minnesota Timberwolves forward, won in the final seconds of that. Will he reign supreme again, or who has the best chance to dethrone him, Jose? Uh, I don't think he'll win this year, but uh, to tell you the truth, I think it's going to be Embiid or Porzingis. Both of them have exceptional ball handling skills for someone as big as they are. Uh, I'd love to see Isaiah Thomas win. I think he's the second best player uh, on that on the point guards uh, squad. But you know these things are too fun for the big guys. They 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 know no one knows how good they are, so they like to show off. And I think it's going to be uh, Embiid or Porzingis. Yeah, I agree with you there, and the fact that it's going to be a big guy because, like you said, I think the big guys really want or go out to prove something in mm -hmm. this contest because they don't get the chance to do it enough. That being said, I'm going to go with Anthony Davis. Ooh. Played most of his career in high school as a point guard, so he got, he's got those ball handling skills. And then after he hit that growth spurt, obviously, when he went to Kentucky, he's become one of the best big guys in the league. But the guy's still got some handle, so I could see Anthony Davis pulling this one out for yeah, sure. Absolutely. It would be cool to see a big guy win again. But I'm going to go with Isaiah Thomas, like you said, a guy who not many people think about, not many people talk about for Boston, but he's been really good, having a really good year. He can handle the ball pretty well, no doubt about it. Next, the NBA three-point contest is next. One of everyone's favorite things, maybe it's b besides the dunk contest, people love the NBA three-point contest. And one guy that you think with the NBA three-point contest is Steph Curry. He's not going to be in it this year. He's not going to participate anymore in this season. Who do you think is the best three-point shooter in this not named Steph Curry? Um, to be honest, I don't remember if he's in it or not, but I would say James Harden is the best three-point shooter in the NBA. Uh, I think he's consistent when he gets his looks. And... Um, if he wasn't the point guard this year, I think he'd be hitting a lot more threes. Yeah, I could respect that James Harden opinion, but um, well, first of all, can we say that it's it's embarrassment that Steph Curry's not in the contest? Everybody, you yeah, know, definitely. everybody in the league wants to see people shooting are watching out there. to see Steph. Yeah, Steph to see Curry. Steph Curry shoot. But anyway, I'd, I'd have to go with uh, Steph's teammate Clay Thompson, who I personally think is going to end up being the second best shooter ever. I don't know about that. Play basketball after after Hot Steph takes. when they're when they're all done. I don't know I, about all that. <laughs> I'd say that'd be. That. They, look at their stats. They got, nah, they got Ray the guy Allen. can shoot. Ray Allen. That's a good so, point. Ray Allen was solid. 
like I, like I was saying, <laughs> I'm going to go with Clay Thompson on this one. It could be the best shooter in the league if it wasn't for his teammate, Steph Curry. So look for um, Clay Thompson to um, possibly repeat. Did he win last year? Clay? No, Steph did. Steph won last yeah, year. Steph Clay won the year before then. That, then. I, I feel like so. Clay yeah. won at some point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they usually just trade it off. So. Yeah. yeah, Clay's a decent pick. I don't know if this guy's in it, but Kyle Korver's a guy who makes a lot of threes. Yeah. I mean, I'm out of touch with NBA. I don't really watch much NBA, but I know Kyle Korver's a guy. Trade to Cleveland a couple weeks ago. He can shoot threes too. And the main event, the NBA slam dunk contest. People are looking forward to this every single year. We all have our favorite memories of the slam dunk contest. This year, uh, reigning champ Zach Levine will be not be participating, excuse me, but Aaron Gordon, a guy who played well last year, will be back. Is he going to take it or is somebody else going to? win this NBA dunk contest. I hope Aaron Gordon takes it. He should have took it last year. The way he jumped over the mascot going, like sitting down. He literally sat down, put the ball through his legs, dunked it, and like eight feet in the air. I don't know how many people 6'10 or taller can do that, but I hope he does something crazy like that this year. Uh, actually, Jose took the player and even the dunk that I was gonna mention about there. I mean, it's just, yeah, I, it was an absolute joke that Aaron Gordon didn't win it last year. He did pretty much the same dunk Zach Levine did yeah. in, in the last round with mm -hmm. more difficulty, and they still gave it to Zach Levine. So I, I think Aaron Gordon's going to come out angrier this year with a, with a few more tricks up his sleeve than he had last year. So it should be exciting to watch. I, hope so. I agree. I think the same thing. Gordon shouldn't have won it. That dunk was ridiculous. I mean, Zach Levine has had his fair share of good dunks in the NBA dunk contest too, but I think last year was Gordon's to win. I think he will win it this year. Lastly, we're talking about dunks. Kind of mentioned this last question. What is the most iconic dunk to you of all time in the slam dunk contest? What What do you think of when you think of the slam dunk contest? And what never before seen dunk would you like to see happen at this year's dunk contest? Well, the first dunk that comes to mind when I think of the dunk contest has to be the Vince Carter dunk that started it off all. He came from the left side. He's a righty. He went against the grain and did a reverse 360 with the windmill and it sent the whole crowd nuts. You know that the dunk contest is back. I think he's the greatest dunker of all time. And just, even if you don't have hops, try to do that like in your like socks. Like that's hard. That's really hard. Like jump off your bed, try to do that. And then like imagine Vince Carter doing that. I thought that was the greatest dunk of all time. Um, a dunk I want to see is a 720. I want to see a 720 so bad. I think it, it's happened before. Andrew Wiggins has shown, has shown like he can yeah. do it. So I'm just waiting for someone to do it. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you on Vince Carter probably having the best dunk contest performance of all time, but with the most iconic dunk ever, I'm going to have to go with Jordan from the free throw line. I feel like, I mean, look at it, that, that, that started a brand. That's, yeah, that's yeah. all over the place. That's on shoes and shirts and hats and everything. That basically, you can't go anywhere without seeing the Jumpman logo, and that all sprung from that specific dunk. But um, it's not so much as um, what I would like to see, uh, which dunk I'd like to see in the dunk contest. It's people I'd like to see in the dunk contest. I want, I want players that should be in the dunk contest to start being in the dunk contest. Mm -hmm. Why has LeBron never been in the dunk contest? Yeah. Why, I mean, Blake Griffin's been in it once. Guys like, now we're starting to get a little, uh, DeAndre Jordan's in it this year, but I want the top dunkers, Russell Westbrook's and stuff yeah, like that. Right. I want people like that who attack the rim constantly. For some reason, these players choose to, because they won't get hurt to participate in the dunk contest or whatever, but that's what I want to see in the dunk contest. These players that could do these dunks that are gonna be elaborate out there. Yeah, I can't remember the last time somebody actually got hurt in a dunk contest, yeah. so I don't know why LeBron and these guys don't do it. I don't think ever. They, they pulled up a guy from the D-League this year who, who granted, he's, he, he's he an amazing can, he can dunker. He, he he's an amazing dunker, but I, I'm, I'm sure LeBron James would pull a lot more viewers yeah, than he absolutely. would because I, I can't even think of his name right now that I'm thinking of it. Yeah, he's so. never played a game. Yeah, he's he hasn't never played, played a game. They, they, the they pulled him up from the D-League for the dunk contest. People want to see the stars. When I think dunk contest, I think of Dwight Howard. Yeah, and super oh, yeah. Dunk. Kind of him and Nate Robinson going out. Yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. Nate yeah, Robinson, five footer Duncan, it's crazy. I was thinking Zach Levine with a cupcake the one year. I think yeah. he like blew out the candle. He, yeah, off the off the back of the yeah, rim. Yeah, that the was candle. pretty crazy too. I'm a big dunk contest guy. We all are here yeah. yep. on the NBA All Star Weekend segment. That's it. That's all the time we have though. Thanks for joining us for this segment. We'll be right back. Jose Villanueva, Kevin Bohan. I'm your host Chris Hayes. We'll be right back on the big hit. Everyone. Welcome to another episode of Witticism. I'm Mary. And I'm Tyler, bringing you the news that matters most around the globe. Hey guys, welcome to Advice with the one and only me. Knowing what he did to Shakira for, for Kesha. all the years. Kesha? <laughs> Kesha? I was <laughs> wondering if I knew Shakira. I was so like. confused. I was like, oh, shit. Well, you should probably rethink your standards and accept the fact that society and boys won't love you unless you're hot. <laughs> 
Sierra. Yeah, she definitely got that necklace from the five for 10 at Claire's. Blot, just blot. You really need to smear it on there, you know? Just, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> can you pout for me? See you next week. I guess when you're 30 years old and your dream is to play basketball with a bunch of high schoolers, ball really is life. Next thing you know, she'll be Chef Curry with the pot and whipping it up for all the grandkids. I'm really sorry about that. Oh, hey, Devonte, you better work on something, man. I want you to check it out. The key word on that. Okay. Welcome back to the big hit, folks. We're talking about Valentine's Day on this special holiday. Uh, let's get right to it. Sarah Moltz, Jarrett Johnson. I'm Chris Sage, your host. Guys, who are your sports crushes? Physically, who would you want to go out on a date with, in other words? And athletically, who do you enjoy watching the most in sports? Sarah, start us off. All right, this is a little bit of a hard question, um, but who I'd want to go on a date with? Wow. Um, I guess I'd want to go on a date with David Beckham. He's beautiful. Um, he's a great soccer player. Um, I grew up playing soccer my entire life, and besides um, following the women's soccer team, I also enjoy the men's soccer team as well, and David Beckham was always the main guy in the spotlight, and he's just beautiful. So yeah, I definitely want to go out with him. That would be awesome. Um, someone who I enjoy watching, obviously Aaron Rodgers. Um, he's obviously, the man. Obviously. obviously. Aaron Rodgers. Um, but I also really enjoyed watching Peyton Manning um, and you know star quarterbacks like Tom Brady. Tom. And, uh, Tom's our favorite. Yeah, Tom's our favorite on the big hit. Um, but yeah, I definitely enjoy watching Aaron Rodgers the most. He's my favorite quarterback of all time, obviously. And uh, he's just a great athlete altogether. Uh, for me, my attraction, I'm probably going to have to say uh, Skylar Diggins. Uh, shooting guard for the uh, Tulsa Shock. <laughs> she, is, she is lovely, absolutely. And then for my watch, I would probably have to say this year would be Lamar Jackson out of Louisville. I mean, he was... He was the sexiest thing you could watch without, you know, not speaking that way, but <laughs> oh, geez. Oh, geez. it was great. Yeah, I'm a Pittsburgh guy. I'll say, I'll say Garrett Cole for the Pirates is a guy that I admire a lot. He's a good pitcher, uh, good-looking guy, too. Uh, also, we, the Summer Olympics were last summer. Uh, we all know Allie Raisman is a gymnast who I've had kind of a crush on, so <laughs> I'll go with Allie Raisman. Next question, though. We've seen some terrific duos in sports. Tom Brady, Bill Belichick for the Patriots, one just won their fifth Super Bowl. In your opinion, guys, who is the most inseparable duo in sports? Jared, go ahead. Uh, if we're talking this last season, I'm going to have to go with uh, Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. Mm. Uh, I think just pretty, pretty much every other game, they were, they were throwing up something, something ridiculous to come back. So that's just my duo. We're gonna go, I'm going to go back a little bit. I'm going to go Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison. Uh, oh, wow. Ooh, great nice. team. Uh, you know, they connected for 112 touchdowns in 10 seasons together with the Colts. Um, when I think of the Colts, Back in that time, I think of those two, for sure. Uh, they won a Super Bowl together. They've been out of nine out of the ten playoff runs together. Um, Harrison went eight straight seasons. He put up at least, like, ten touchdowns, uh, receptions with Manning. And he caught, like, over 950 balls with Manning for, like, 12,000 yards. So stats don't lie. Great duo, those two. Manning Harrison's a solid pick, for sure. Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Seth Curry, Clay Thompson for the Warriors, the Splash yeah, Brothers. Yeah, that's good. They're called brothers for a reason. They drain the threes all day, every day. <laughs> they, they won their championship a couple years ago, lost last year. They might win again this year with Kevin Durant in the mix. So that's my pick. Lastly, in recent history, there have been some difficult sports breakups between players or players and coaches, players and teams. Whose breakup has been the ugliest out of all of these you can think of, and why, Sarah? Well, there's two that came to mind. Um, one was... Terrell Owens and back in the day when he just broke everything up possible. Um, it's kind of a shame because he was a great athlete, but he just, every team he was on, he just couldn't stay on, you know. When he was first the 49ers, he had a messy contract. He started fights with uh, Garcia at the time when he was head coach. Then he went to Philly, and then after one season, he like wanted to negotiate deals. He wasn't happy, of course, T.O. 
Um, and then he like went out and slammed Donovan McNabb and talked about about him. Can't talk about your own you know teammate, especially not the quarterback. Yeah, it didn't go over well in Philly. And then he went. He started crapping Dallas as always with you know him messing around and then him, the you know, touchdowns, popcorns, yeah. dancing all every time he scored a touchdown. So and they spit in D'Angelo Hall's face. So I think that you know unfortunately he was just someone that. Always had the ugliest breakups. And then LeBron James leaving Cleveland the first time. That's a good that one. That was ugly. Um, he should have never left. I think everyone hated him. Um, after that time, he went to Miami and played, you know, was with uh, Wade and Bosch. But then he came back in 2014. Two years later, he wins the championship with the Cleveland Cavaliers. But, yeah, he should have never left the first time. But I guess they, they it was okay. Together. Lived, they right? Together. They got back together. So it wasn't too ugly. Yeah. But they made it through. Um, I'm going to have to go recent with the, uh, the KD uh, whole Westbrook situation. Oh, yeah. Another good Cause one. Because when, when you talk KD, he's, I mean, he, he got drafted by the Supersonics. Like, this man is the face of Oklahoma City. Like, people knew him for what he was there for. Yeah, anytime they went to a uh, playoff game, a championship, you knew KD was putting up big numbers in that game. Uh, so I think him leaving was just a, a huge uh, ordeal, obviously. I think so, too. We talked about NBA players a lot. I'm going to go back to NFL and talk okay. about... Your Packers and Brett Favre. Oh, yes. The way Brett Favre yes. handled things in Green Bay. All right. right. Um, let me kind of rant for a second about that. That was going to yeah, be my next one, ahead. too. How can you – okay, first of all, I know they were like, you know, Aaron Rodgers with the backup. You know, they were basically <laughs> trading him, you know, getting ready to kick Brett Favre sure, the curve. Yeah. Okay. After a couple seasons, you know, he had a great couple seasons. In the last, like, two or three, he was not doing so well. Then he goes to Minis – what? He goes to Minnesota, right? Or did he go to the Jets? He went to Minnesota first. <laughs> I think so. so. So you go to a team in your division? Sorry, dude. Like, to me, <laughs> well, he, no. He just wanted to play. He wanted to play. Okay, play. so then he's like, okay, I'm going to retire. And then he's like, wait, just kidding. I'm going to come back. And then he comes back and he goes to a team that they that rivals in their division. Okay, I guess, whatever. And then he goes to the Jets and he does crappy in both. I'm like, dude, just, I'm done. I'm done with you, Brett Favre. But he will always be one of my favorite retired players. I mean, he won a time. Super Bowl with Green Bay. He oh, played yeah. well for them for years and they just kicked him out the door. But for it was time to go. Look at Aaron Rodgers they now. They made an NFC Championship game, I think, the year before he left. Okay, yes, that's a good point. But and they blew how it, just like Aaron Rodgers. But how many, uh, how many more seasons do you think Brett Favre would have been able to continue doing he what he did? He reached the NFC Championship game with the Vikings when he played for them, too. He, he was good. He, he it was, was old, but he was good. It was weird seeing him in a, in a purple jersey. I, I, was. I wasn't a fan of that. I was, you know, wasn't he still number four, too? Yeah, he, was. he was. That was weird. That's so weird. I bet it was weird for you. Yeah, it was so <laughs> weird. Broke well, my that's, heart. That's all the time we have on this quick Valentine's Day segment with uh, Green Bay Packers fan Sarah Moltz <laughs> and Jarrett Johnson. I'm Chris Hayes. We'll be right back with the Valentine's Day game show. Stay tuned for this. You're not going to want to miss this. We'll be right back on the big hit. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Press Start Discussion Lounge. Our topic of the day is going to be the first intense gaming experience or the several experiences that hooked you into becoming a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. Where is she? Where is she? I can't find her. Can't find her. Can't find her. Oh my god, what is that? Hey there everyone, we've got news on new teasers for Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, 16 pre-ordered DLCs for Final Fantasy 15, and PlayStation Store celebrates 10 years with a sale. My name is County, and this is your Press Start News Roundup. Here at the Big Hit, we're a pretty supportive group of people. You know, it can be slightly nerve-wracking going on air at times, so occasionally we like to give our analysts a a little extra boost of confidence.
If you want to find love nowadays, you don't have to be a bachelor or a bachelorette. Holy sh**. If you want to find love nowadays, you don't have to be a bachelor or a bachelorette. You just need to be a contestant on the show to the- oh f Personally, I'm hurting for the kids of the future that listen to the Hollaback Girl and can't figure out what ABA- oh my f Obviously that proves he's uh, Muslim. So if his beard is, implies the Im Islam, then I guess the- oh f The people have been claiming that Obama is a Muslim moved it on to Ryan, and the proof is in the pudding. I'm sorry. Well, hello and welcome into the first big hit dating game. This is a game show we're going to play where we have on one side a bachelorette, on the other side three uh, willing bachelors trying to score a date with our bachelorette. There are also three NFL players. Uh, like I said, on one side we have our lovely bachelorette. On the other side we have our three NFL players. Bachelor number one we'll start with. He is a three-time Pro Bowler for the New York Giants, a Pro Bowl wide receiver. Bachelor number two is a two-time Super Bowl champion quarterback from the Pittsburgh Steelers. And bachelor number three is also a two-time Super Bowl champion quarterback, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, playing for the Indianapolis Colts and the Denver Broncos. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, bachelor number one, I'm gonna start with you. I just want to say that I am so tired of men taking me home to Netflix and chill on a first date. So if we were to go on a first date, where would you take me? Probably on a boat. You know, I like the water. I don't like swimming. I just like staying around it, you know, fishing. It's uh, pretty much it, like chilling with my shirt off, hanging out with my peeps Drake and Justin Bieber. That's pretty much it. Wow, okay, an outdoors man. I like that. Bachelor number two, what about you? Um, for, well, you know, there's this bar down a little bit south of Georgia. It's called the Velvet Elvis. Uh, I've taken a bunch of girls there, and they've all loved it. I, to be honest, I've only had one complaint. So I think you would really enjoy it there. So I'm definitely taking you to the Velvet Elvis. Hmm, I'm not really a fan of you taking other women there before me, but um, bars are cool, I guess. Bachelor number three, what about you? Well, honestly, I know this pizza place that me and the wife used to go to all the time. We take the girls out there and they love it. It's, it's owned by my buddy John, so I probably could get us a decent discount on an extra large pie. Okay, wow. Uh, I do like pizza. Not really a fan of the fact that you have a wife. Uh, we can talk about that later, I guess. So I'm going to have to say that I like Bachelor One's answer the most. Um, but I also, I, I, Bachelor 1 was good, Bachelor 2 and Bachelor 3, not so great. So let's move on to the second question I have for Bachelor number 2. I would describe myself personally as fun, bubbly, and adventurous. So in three words, how would you describe your personality? Um, professional, uh, retired, actually scratch that. Um, professional, sh sharing, and a little bit fat. <laughs> okay, uh, you're honest. I like that. Bachelor number three, how about you? I'll tell you three things about me, girl. It's eat, sleep, football. That's it. If you can't get on board with that, I don't know how we're going to work. Okay, wow. Um, straight to the point there. I, I like that. Bachelor one, what about you? Dance, money, clothes. I'm rich, I'm 23, I don't care about nothing, buy my money. Interesting, okay. Um, yeah, well, I'm gonna have to say that I like Bachelor 3's answer the most because he just knows what he wants in life. I think that was a very direct answer. Um, then I'm gonna have to go with Bachelor number two. Decent, Bachelor number one, not so great, okay. Let's move on to my next question. We'll start with you, bachelor number three. It's really important to me that a man loves and respects his mother. So are you close to your mom and would you consider yourself a mama's boy? Well, um, actually my mom liked my, uh, my younger brother a little bit earlier in my life, but then I won two Super Bowls too. So I think I'm the favorite again. So I'd say yes, I'm very close with my mom. 
Okay, good, good, nice. Uh, bachelor number one, what about you? Yeah, me and my mom are cool. She, she don't say much about me doing what I do. She just come to my games to support. So we cool, we cool. Okay, nice. Bachelor number two? Um, if I'm being honest, I mean, my mom was about my best friend up until about 09. I gotta let you know, it's had a little bit of a run in with the law and I haven't really spoke to my mom for a bit. She said it's about something about respect, but you know, I'm still working out, but I love my mother very much. Okay, well, I, I mean, it's unfortunate you got in trouble with the law, but you did tell me that you love your mom very much, so I, I like that answer. So, bachelor number two, I'm going to have to say that you had the, the best answer, and then I'm going to have to give it to bachelor number three, and then bachelor number one. Okay, let's move on to the next question I have. I'm really looking for a man in my life that is driven, ambitious, and of course has the ability to make me laugh. So bachelor number one, what kind of qualities are you looking for in a woman? Well, first of all, I like my girls thick down low and smart in the brain. But what I really love is a girl that's cool with me playing football, because that's all I do. All I do is play football my whole life. And I, my favorite thing is a girl with put up my hair, because my hair is my number one feature. I mean, I'm a pretty simple man. Uh... First thing for me uh, in a woman, she has to be there, preferably in the same room. Uh, number two, I'd like her to fog a mirror. And number three, uh, if she owns a terrible towel, that's just gravy. Okay, uh, yeah, so bachelor number three, what's your answer? Uh, for me, to be honest, I'm just looking for someone to get along with my wife and my girls. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, those answers weren't great. Um, Bachelor number one, I asked you what kind of qualities you like in a woman, and you somehow formulated the question to be about you and your hair. Um, bachelor number two, you don't seem to have high qualities in a woman, which concerns me. And bachelor number three, you have a wife and kids, which I'm really not fond of, but I'd have to say that's probably the best answer out of all of them, which is saying something. Okay. Well, let's see, hopefully this one, this next question is a little bit better. Sometimes on a Saturday night, I like to max, relax, you know, chill out. Other times I like to go out to the bar, have a good time. Bachelor number two, what is your ideal Saturday night? Well, first off, I'll uh, hop on my motorcycle. Uh, lost my helmets though, so it's a little bit of a safety hazard there. Second off, I told you about the Velvet Elvis. I'm a big fan of that place, and uh, you're asking a perfect Saturday night? Probably go to bed early, rest up, and uh, you know, get ready for them ravens. Okay, I, yeah, I like the resting part. Seems like you're kind of a bad boy with the, with the motorcycle no helmet thing. Uh, that, that's cool, I, I can respect that. Um, okay, so bachelor number three, what about you? Well, it depends. If there's no football on on the on that particular Saturday night, then I probably just load up the minivan, take the girls and the the misses down to the Papa John's. I mean, I told you I could get the discount. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm a big fan of pizza. Not sure how I would get along with the wife and kids. Uh, that doesn't really seem ideal. So, bachelor number one, let's go with you. What's your answer? Girl, I know Justin Bieber, Drizzy, Rihanna. I know Jay Z. Kanye, I know all celebrities up in New York City. You know I don't do nothing but party it up right before a playoff game. I like to get hype, but I'm still not going to do nothing in the playoff game. I'll, I'm all talk. Huh, well, that's um, not very attractive that you won't, you know, give it your all. But I do like the fact that you're friends with Drake and Justin Bieber. That's kind of a plus. So I'm going to say Bachelor number one, you have the best answer. Drizzy. Bachelor number two, uh, second best. I don't really like the fact that you ride a motorcycle without a helmet. That seems a bit dangerous. But I do like the fact that you can, you know, relax on a Saturday night. And bachelor number three, I just don't know how I would fit into this whole wife and kids ordeal. So, you know, that just really kind of concerns me there. Okay. So, uh, one last question for you guys really important to me, it kind of just tells me who you are in a nutshell. Um, if I were to be stranded on a desert island, I would bring my dog, my favorite book, 
and my cell phone, of course, even though there probably wouldn't be any cell service, but you know, you can still play games and whatnot. So bachelor number three, what about you? What three things would you bring? Oh, that's an easy one. I would bring one football, one helmet, and Demarius so we can run the passing tree all day. Okay, yeah, do you really love football? Love I, it. Uh, that's admirable. Okay, bachelor number one, how about you? First of all, I bring no shirts because all my ties make me look good. Second of all, I bring another boat because I love boats. <laughs> the only way to leave is on a boat. And third of all, I'd bring Drizzy just because it's Drizzy. Okay, um, yeah, that's, that's a good answer. Uh, I like the boat idea because obviously if you're stranded, you would need a boat to get out. So that's like smart thinking on that part. I like that. Bachelor number two, how about you? Uh, I mean, you got to stay hydrated. You don't want to cramp up. So I'm sure the science is out there to, for a device to drink salt water and take the salt out. So I'm bringing that. Uh, for my second item, I'd like to bring three more wishes. And for my third item, uh, I guess like bacon, maybe some sort of food, preferably from a pig. So, yeah. Okay, that's, that's a good answer too. A little unrealistic with the whole genie thing, but um, I like it. A little cliche, but you know, it's fine. Uh, bachelor number one, I, I, I'll give you the, uh, the best answer. Then I'll hand it over to bachelor number two with the second best. And bachelor number three, not so much, sorry. But, that is my last question for you guys, so. Well now folks, it is decision time here on the match dating show here on the big hit. Our three NFL players answer all the questions that were asked to them. Our bachelorette asked five or six great questions. It's time for her to choose. Bachelorette, out of these three men, who do you choose? Well, uh a tough decision I'd have to say I'm gonna be honest none of these answers were great they weren't even really good at best so if I'd have to choose I mean bachelor number one just seems really into himself you know I don't really know if he could appreciate me and have room for me in his life bachelor number two just kind of seems like I don't really know if you know he's has drive or ambition, um, and that's really important to me. And bachelor number three, I mean, he kind of has life figured out for him, you know? He gets the discounts at Papa John's, he has a wife, he has kids. He's got it all figured out, and I'm <coughs> sure that there's a place for me there, so I'm gonna have to go with bachelor number three. Omaha! <laughs> there you have it, folks. Bachelor number three is your winner, the two-time Super Bowl champion quarterback, the Denver Broncos Peyton Wish I had a kicking yet. wins the first Big Hit match game challenge, the dating game challenge, we call it here on the Big Hit. That's all the time we have here. Thank you, everybody, for participating. I'm your host, Chris Hayes. That is the end of the episode. Thank you so much for watching. From director Mike Martone, producers Sean Fritz and Jose Villeneuve. Again, I'm your host, Chris Hayes. Thank you. This is the Big Hit. See you next time. <laughs>